So horse racing are an integral part of finding profit from horse racing. Um, and the race advisor has more ratings than any other provider in the UK that I am aware of. And we've started to do a public analysis of some of these ratings, some of these factors, um, and I'm just gonna be updating you on what they are. And some of the factors that we have are gonna perform really well, stand alone, and some of them are gonna perform so well, they're designed to be grouped together to add a little bit of extra information to the puzzle, as opposed to being used as a base factor, a base rating, a base piece of information. And so today I'm gonna to look at the 5278 CFR horse racing rating. And this rating is a combination factor, which means um, it takes account of a number of other pieces of information. Um, it's not measuring just a single thing. We take actually other ratings, other factors, and combine some of them together to create a single factor. And the goal of doing that for the 5278 was to find a very quick way to find contenders. And CFR actually stands for Contender Finder Rating, which was its original full name. It's a bit of a mouthful, so we shrank it down to CFR. Um, and 5278 because um, it wins between, or it finds the winner between 52 and 78% of the time, um, depending on the race conditions from amongst its top four ranked horses. Now, by default, this rating is a ranking rating. So uh, the best horse is number one, the second best horse is number two, the third best horse is number three, etc. down the field. Now, I'm going to be talking in this video about some things. I'm going to be talking about selections, and that means the number of selections found. I'm going to be talking about profit, um, and I'm going to use points rather than a monetary value, um, and that is going to be profit or loss to Betfair SP with a 2% commission assumed. Um, if we haven't got Betfair SP, um, we will replace that with the SP odds, um, but generally speaking, we have Betfair SP for the most of races and horses. Wins is obviously the number of winners. Strike rate is the percentage of winners that we are going to find. Um, return on investment is uh, the percentage return made on the turnover of bets. So this isn't a yearly return, this is a return, average return per bet. Obviously you're not gonna win every bet, um, but it's an average return that you would have got over say, you know, 100, 1,000, 2,000 bets, the average return you'd have got per bet. The AE ratio, which is um, also known as PIV or pool impact value in some countries. And this shows how many winners we found compared to the number of expected winners. And we calculate the expected winners based on their odds. Um, generally, if this figure is greater than one, if this AE ratio or this PIV is greater than one, then we are finding winners more often than the odds suggested, and that means we've got an edge. If the PIV is less than one or the AE ratio is less than one, we are finding winners less often than the odds suggest, and we don't have an edge. And finally, we're gonna look a little bit um, occasionally and possibly at the cheese square. And the cheese square is a simple statistical test that tells how likely the results are due to chance. Um, so obviously 100% means it's 100% likely due to chance, 0% means it's 0% likely due to chance. Generally, we like to get it less than 10%, really less than 5% if possible. But since we're only looking at um, single ratings, we're not combining, we're just looking at a raw performance before anything else is done. Um, we we're expecting them to be higher, you know, 25%, 30%. And before we put any kind of um, information like race types or whatever in, um, probably much higher than that as well, 80%. Um, so that's what those factors mean. So we're gonna start by just saying, does this particular rating, this 5278 CFR, Contender Finder Rating, make horse racing profit? So using data from 2018 to the present day, if we just take the top four ranked horses, and I'm gonna take that because um, the original purpose of this rating was to find uh, quick horses that are contenders. So we're taking the top four. And if we do that, over around 110,000 uh, runners, some, something like that, um, we can find that horses ranked number one um, had a 22% strike rate, made just over 12 units profit, um, and had an AE ratio of one. Um, horses ranked number two um, had an 18% strike rate, made a, a small loss of minus 2%, and had an AE ratio of 0 0.99. You can see there, 0 0.99, we're making a small loss. Uh, the profit was minus 568 units over 25,000 selections. And if you want to see these figures on your screen, on a piece of paper, um, I'll put a link below this video, which will take you straight to the blog post where you can actually see these numbers. Um, rank three 
I had a 15% strike rate and a minus 4% return on investment. Uh, and rank four had a 12% strike rate and a minus 5% return on investment. So the strike rate decreases steadily as, as we progress down the ranks as the horse effectively becomes less strong, which is exactly as we would expect. We would expect that nice smooth degradation of strike rate as we're finding less uh, winners the lower down the field we get. Um, the average um, AE ratio or PIV is 0 0.99, which is a great start because that effectively means we're nearly break even without doing anything. And don't forget this is across all types of race. There is no race filters going on here. This is just top four horses across any race since 2018. So we're almost breaking even here um, at Betfair SP with 2% commission before doing anything. Then if we look at uh, the impact that race conditions have, um, and we look at race types first, immediately we can see that actually flat turf, um, hurdle turf and hunter chase are the best with um, flat all weather also um, being pretty strong as well. Hunter Chase has actually made a profit, but there's only been 94 selections since 2018, so the sample's not really big enough, but it has a big edge. The AE ratio, the PIV number, is 1.26, so it's got a 26% edge, but there's not many selections, and I would expect to see that drop down over time. Um, the hurdle turf, flat turf, and flat all weather um, are averaging around about a 1% for the AE or PRV. So effectively we haven't got an edge, but we're pretty much breaking even. However, we are seeing a, an increased strike rate of around 21% um, for horses ranked number one in those. Um, and we are seeing an increased return on investment of about 2%, although we would expect that to kind of level out a little bit. Most importantly, what this tells us is that the races that we should be focusing on um, are flat turf, hurdle turf, and flat all weather um, but I'm going to focus on so and, and that is for obviously um, rank horses rank number one for this particular rating so we've narrowed that down and also these races have got the most races they've got the the biggest number of selections in them so we're looking at um, 8,000 6,000 kind of runners for each one in two years. So there's plenty of selection. So we've got space to kind of narrow it down and refine our process somewhat because there is a lot of selections there. So if we take flat turf um, as an example, then um, I'm going to look at another factor. I'm going to add another factor in and I'm going to look at days since the last good race. So how many days has it been since the horse had a good race? And I broke this down into four elements, uh, less than or equal to 90 days, between 90 and 180 days, between 180 and 365 days, um, or more than a year. So greater than 365 days. And that was very, very interesting because I personally tend to prefer to remove runners who haven't performed well recently. And that usually means horses that haven't had a good race in kind of 365 days, sometimes going down as low as 180 days. Um, it is a bit dependent on the other runners in the race. But in this situation, um, doing this, we found that there was a sweet spot for the best performing runners between 180 days and 365 days. It historically has an edge of 10%. So that's an AE ratio or PMV of 1.1, 1 .1, uh, indicating an edge of 10%, and that's over, um, over nearly 1,300 or coming up to 1,300 selections. Um, the strike rate on it was 18%, uh, which is a little bit on the low side because 18% means we're going to lose 82% of our bets, or we can expect to lose 82% of our bets, which means we can be, expect to have some very long losing streaks and downswings. Um, but it's still a very good performance. I mean, remember, we're only looking at the top ranked horse here on flat turf who's had a good race in the last 180 to 365 days. Um, so we're looking at only kind of three base pieces of information here uh, without any real analysis. And we're already at a point where we're making a small profit. We've got a 10% edge. This made a 7% return on investment. Um, but there are some long losing streaks. Um, it's also worth pointing out that um, the less than or equal to 90 days, so those horses that had less than or equal to 90 days made a good profit of 134 units. 
uh, and a 2% return on investment, but the AE or the PIV was one, so we didn't have an, an edge there, um, which is concerning. We would need to dig into that a bit more, but there are nearly 6,500 selections within that category, so there would be plenty of room, again, to kind of dig a little deeper. Um, but I'm going to stick with 180 to 365 days at the moment because also that has a chi-square of 12%, which means that there's only a 12% chance that those results uh, are due to chance, are, are due to luck. So it's, a, um, it's an 88% chance that those results are due to the factors that we have put in. Now, I don't usually like to dig into too many factors historically because we run into the danger of overfitting or backfitting. But in this situation and with that particular caveat, uh, we'll just have to have a quick look at how horses that meet this criteria and who are also in the top four of betting have performed with this rating. Because I think this could be a very quick way to increase the strike rate from 18% on these runners to make it a little bit more palatable. Um, so doing that, which means we're looking at the top ranked 5278 CFR runners on flat turf, who've had a good race in the last 180 to 365 days and are top four in the market. Um, for those, we've got just over 840 selections over two years, um, which is nearly just under one a day. Um, it made... Uh, it did increase the strike rate as we expected. It increased it actually from 18% to 25%, which is actually a huge increase. That 7% can push you from actually something that you're not uncomfortable with, with very long downswings, to something that actually may be kind of a little bit more comfortable. Uh, the losing streak is going to be a bit more manageable. Uh, the downswing is going to be a bit more manageable. Um, so it did that. It, the AE ratio or the PIV stayed, well, went up a little bit, it went to 1.11, so there's an 11% edge instead of a 10% edge, so we, we increased the edge slightly there, uh, so actually these runners are performing 11% better than the market is expecting them to perform. Um, very importantly, the chi square also came down to just under 9% which means we have now passed the 90% barrier that n there is a 90% chance that these selections are due to the factors that we put in. And it's not just chance. Um, and, and there was a profit increase up to 117 units um, as well over that time frame. So given that this would give you just one selection a day on average, if you then spent a few minutes just checking in to see if these runners are strong under the current race conditions, um, obviously, this is contender finding process. We're looking to find those contenders. So then we want to confirm that these horses are strong, that we may want to bet on them. And of course, how we may want to bet on them. We want to decide that sort of information as well. Um, if we go into that, you should actually be able to improve on these even more. So in summary, uh, based on this investigation into the 5278 CFR rating, um, the following situation, the top ranked horse on flat turf races uh, who'd had a good race between 180 and 365 days and was top four in the market, would have found the winner 25% of the time since 2018, have an 11% edge and made a return on investment of 14%. And, and the purpose of this and the purpose of digging in to some of these factors is twofold. I want to dig into them so that you have a better understanding of how some of our ratings, some of our factors work, um, and also how they perform before you um, mix them together before you use them combined. So before you start looking at two, three or four factors, actually, how do some of these factors, these ratings perform standalone with just some basic race information such as race type or day since last good race, just some basic race information. How do these factors perform? And I want to do that because I want to show you that actually finding the profit don't, you don't have to use a lot of ratings. You don't have to use pages of numbers and, and lots of information. It doesn't have to be that difficult. The hardest part is actually knowing what type of strategy suits you the most. Because obviously this is just one way to look at this rating. We've only looked at the top rank really, but we know the top, the, the second rank, the third rank and the fourth rank all will pretty much break even on all races before you do anything. So you've got a great base level to start there. Obviously, the lower down you get in the ranking, the lower down you get in the contenders, the strike rate drops, so you've got the long, uh, longer losing streaks. But again, that could be combated by Dutch betting. It could be combated by place betting or 80-20 betting. Um, so there's a lot of ways that you could combat that losing, uh, potential losing streak and low strike rate by changing up the bet time. Um, so 
just taking any of the top four, five, two, seven, eight CFR ratings in any race will produce that almost break even result long term. And from there, you can build on that um, to make your profit in whatever set of race conditions you actually want. Um, so you can build that out there. Um, I hope that uh, you've enjoyed watching this video. If you've not yet registered for your free account at The Race Advisor, please do so. Head over to www.raceadvisor.co.uk, um, create a free account, uh, get in there. Um, you will also, with your free account, you'll get access to Aldermist, our like real racing platform, where you can test strategies um, in a like real racing environment, and when you're profitable, you can transition them straight out into live racing. Um, it is the world's first um, platform designed by betters for betters to learn and to practice strategies on in an environment that's like real racing but offers you zero risk. Um, so thank you very much for watching. It's been great uh, chatting with you and I look forward to seeing you in another video where I'm going to look at some other ratings.